All right, this is a collaboration video with Rich of Ford Boss Me. And each of us has one of these smart diagnosis tools or bi-directional, um, basically shop level type tools. So I have the X-Tool D7. And that's the one I'm gonna be talking about. So it comes with a pretty nice carry case keep everything safe. Those are the USB charger, a wall charger that has both the American and whatever that one is. And then it connects via this cable and then that obviously goes to your OBD port and that can disconnect from there. And if my memory is correct, this can also hook up to an optional EEPROM programmer and I think that's where this plug comes in as well. And that allows you to do some custom key cutting or whatever that does. Now this also has some stuff like that. And so there are things that you can do on here without the optional tool as well. And that's where the special function comes in. So you see there's key programming, some cluster work, power balance, seat match, EEPROM, and language change, that's electronic parking brake, throttle, transport mode, something to do with the steering. I don't know what DPF stands for. Injector coating, oil reset, AF reset, TPMS reset, BMS reset, ABS bleeding, stop and start reset, headlights, windows initialization, Electronic pump activation, suspension, gear learning, gearbox match, airbag reset, and tire upgrade. Now, a lot of these functions are not really active in the cars I own. You gotta understand, I have a 2004 Mustang Cobra. I have the 2008 Crown Victoria Police Interceptor P71. I have the 2010. Crown Victoria Police Interceptor P7B. I have the 2004 Chevy Avalanche. I have the 2010 Dodge Charger police car with the Hemi V8 in it. 2004 Nissan Maxima that I won at an auction. For the age of my vehicles, a lot of these things don't really apply, which is why I'm saying there, there's a lot of functions on here that I don't get to use or try out. Uh, my wife has a 2013 Chevy Silverado and a 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan, and I'm sure the 17 Caravan probably has a little bit of this, but it's still, some of this stuff is really newer technology. You see it also has updates. My understanding is it's three years of updates. So I guess if you're using this in a shop where you're constantly getting newer vehicles in, that could potentially be an issue that you'd want to address. For me, not having newer vehicles, I don't know that constantly getting updates is all that big of a deal. And then obviously you have your diagnosis here and unlike your typical $50 code reader that you might find, this scans all of the systems that are available on a vehicle, not just your check engine lights, but it'll do the brake system, the HVAC system, all, all the other types of systems that there are in the cars. And then it's also bi-directional, meaning you can change settings, activate things, and so forth. So it's a really nice tool to have. Like I've said before, I think you could run a small shop with just this tool. I will say one of the things I really like about this compared to even like the A30M that I have is this comes with the tablet. And not only that, but it's got, you see this protective case which makes me feel a lot better about handling it. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna purposely drop it or anything, but it, it just looks like it's made a little bit tougher than your typical tablet. The A30M runs off of cell phone, Kindle, or other type of tablet. 
So I'm really curious to see what Rich says about the one he's got, which is a competitive brand. They're both about the same price. If you watch Amazon, you'll see they'll put different coupons and so forth. They're typically running in the $450 to $500 range from what I have noticed with a uh, probably your typical price being about $475, $480, somewhere in there. Battery life on this is amazing. You see it's showing 100%. I just ran three ABS bleeds back to back to back with it and it hasn't run down the battery at all. And then it's just been sitting here like this to show you. And then you have your settings. So you can put your actual information there and uh, I think it has a way to print out like if you were running a shop then you could put an address and phone and all that and actually print out like estimates and different things like that okay that button there is the screenshot so if you're wanting to take a screenshot of whatever codes are popping up you can and then you see it has a home screen so it's actually an Android device and it has some different software and so forth over here besides just the scanning for the D7. So you see it comes with Acrobat, a web browser, a calculator, a calendar, a clock, the actual diagnosis program. You see a couple other programs, even has email on it and so forth. So I mean you, you can use this probably as a regular tablet on top of being your scan tool. You just plug that into your OBD port, turn your key to the run position with the engine off. There are some tests you can do with the engine actually running as well. And then just let it do its thing. So put the key on and pick America Ford. Automatically detect. And that's the only thing it doesn't automatically detect is the difference between the Grand Marquis and the Crown Vic and the 10 or 11 model year. And we'll go ahead and do an automatic scan and you'll see it will scan every possible system in the vehicle. You see it's discovered so there are six different systems on the Crown Vic that's why I was saying they're more basic than some of the newer cars. We have a powertrain control module an anti-lock braking system restraint control module instrument cluster driver door module and lighting control module and it says that I have a failure in the driver door module and a failure in the anti-lock brakes which is interesting so Let's see what it says about the ABS. ECU internal fault. Code is B1342-20. It's interesting, and the reason I said this is I do not have an ABS light on the dash now or when I'm driving so this code is an interesting one I don't know if it'll give me any more information I'll probably have to Google that and see and you do wonder is that my squishy pedal problem and then we'll go to the driver door module and see what it says That's another one I don't think there's any actual problem. So 
So left front door jar switch is shorter to ground. That may not be a problem. I actually have the door open. <laughs> and then fault of tire pressure sensor. I'm not using the tire pressure system because there was a bad one. And so I switched to that aftermarket one. So I'm not really worried about the tire pressure one. Let me see if, if I close the door and run this test again, if that one goes away. Yeah, so the, if you leave a door open, I guess that's a good thing though that it senses that. Turn on all warning lamps. There you go. So you could use that to test if you have a bulb out. So I'm bumping up the fuel gauge to show different amounts. So that's the full. And I guess what you could do with this is if you had the, where it was off and you wanted to change it, and get it corrected you could always change it to whatever you wanted anyway there's a whole bunch of different actuation tests on here I'm not going to go through all of them and bore you possibly use some of these to get your needles lined up so that they show the correct zero and everything you can activate the different valves manually so if you're not wanting to do the actual ABS bleed that's part of the system here you can activate a valve for instance I'll put my foot on the brake I activate that valve and then I turn it off it, it moved my foot on the brake pedal so you can do the different valves on there you can turn on the pump if you want so I don't think that replaces doing the actual ABS bleed procedure but you could test different things and see like if you thought you had air stuck in the left front valve for example you could open that one up and try to do it that way overall it's an amazing tool and definitely worth the $450 to $500 price tag if you are a pretty active DIY guy or if you have your own independent shop. My assumption is that this one and the one that Ford Boss Me is reviewing are basically the same thing, just different manufacturers. So it may come down to your preference of their screen and the interface and that sort of thing all right some of you have asked and I didn't know the answer so I reached out to Xtool and I have to say yet again their support is top-notch so the question I asked them was with Forescan, you can turn on and off certain features like the daytime running lamps whether the car locks automatically when you start driving whether it unlocks when you put it in park and open the driver's door uh, turning on and off dark mode things like that and I knew those could be done with Forescan really easily but I didn't know how to do them on the D7 and they explained it to me and so what they said was those type of things are called writing to the ECU and those are not available on the D7 or below however the D8 scan tool does have ECU programming on it. So if you're kind of on the fence on what to buy, I would recommend spending the extra money and get the D8. Had I known that when I got my D7, I would have bought the D8, put it that way. So I'm really looking forward to Ford Boss Me's video to see what his scan tool does, if anything that's different than the D7. Uh, from what I've seen, they're both basically the same price, so it's just a matter of which one do you prefer. Uh, for me, I've had really good luck with the X-Tool. The support is top-notch. They 
reach out and answer questions usually within a few hours um, they're obviously in a different time zone than me so sometimes it's easier to reach them at weird hours but like I said always answer questions always helpful uh, work with me every way they can to uh, you know make the tool work for me if I'm struggling with something so uh, I will be real curious to see what sort of experience he's had with his tool uh, as far as that goes so anyway hope the video was helpful uh, don't forget to go watch Ford Boss Me's video if you haven't already. Uh, since he has a bigger channel than mine, you probably already have seen his. But uh, if you haven't, go check his out too. Uh, appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Uh, check out all my other videos and tell your friends about my channel. Thank you very much.